Yes, here and now we are here to talk about the continuing war and ceasefire in Palestine, Gaza, and uh, the shockwaves that it has sent throughout the whole world. You know, even the United States of America is feeling the impact of this revolutionary war. It's not just, you know, uh, insurrection. This is revolutionary war. Yeah, I... I um... There have been demonstrations. I found out that a few a few weeks or two ago, there was a big to do in the in the State Department. People were sending letters to the State Department, stating their opposition to what was going on. This is within the government. This is unprecedented. It's only because we have this type of government here that the government wasn't brought down. Because usually, when you have people resigning or issuing letters of protest within the government that usually can force the government to call new elections. But the United States system is not like that. Right. But I, I found that there had been some struggle even within the government itself, within employees of, of, of the State Department yeah. and within the White House that basically the bombing of the hospitals, I think, did it. I think that the random murder of Palestinians in and of itself might not shake people, but the hospital bombings did shake people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think I think that's that's where the Israel crossed the line of at least oh let's say mainstream civil society. Uh -huh. Um the activist core, those who are those who are opposed to the Zionist state from the left, who support Palestinian Palestinian uh self-determination and revolution from the left. Now this surprises us, I don't think. It's what this, it's what Israel's always done. Mm. But now it's so open mm. and they're using the boogeyman of Hamas mm. to justify mass murder. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. If one if one native tribe scalped a population of settlers in Oklahoma, that does not just justify the trail of tears. Hmm. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Besides, okay, scalping I don't was started by the uh, colonialists when they were scalping the uh, uh, indigenous men's, you know, hair because it was so long. Yeah, exactly. So when the when when the, when the tables were turned, oh no, they're scalping us. Oh no, you know, <laughs> really, no, you know, no, really, really yeah. it's, the victim is not supposed uh, to fight back or something like that. I don't no, know. No, you're not supposed to fight. That's see, that's that's the thing, uh, Abraham. The press people are not supposed to fight back. Yeah. And I'm not going to see. Let me tell you something. We had Thanksgiving in the United States in its, in its territories Thursday. And I have to say, the images of Gaza really made, to, for me, a very dampened Thanksgiving. I mean, those images from Gaza are nothing to celebrate. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to have that. It's hard to have that in the back of your mind. And you're sitting down picking stuff out with food, you know. That's not, you know, <laughs> it, it 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 just doesn't. It just that's doesn't. Like, it, uh, it, celebrating a victory over the indigenous nations. Well, that you know that that's why people who people who are, I would say, socially progressive or historically progressive, cannot celebrate Thanksgiving. Oh well, the pilgrim had a meal with the. With the oh, no, don't don't no. Sorry, just no. No, that that didn't happen. If it did happen, there was some subterfuge going on. Mm -hmm. It has to be your friends. For you people get together for some kind of the social meal. That's all it can be. For the Thanksgiving, the programs, and the Indians, and all this nonsense. We had a we broke bread. No, no, oh, no. sorry. Yeah, the history doesn't history yeah. doesn't bear that out. Yeah, history is still there. You know, like Wall Street was the wall against the native people. To separate, you know, the fort of New York. It was like, not a city; it was a fort with a wall, <laughs> and that's why it's called Wall Street. <laughs> that's where mm -hmm. it came from. Yeah, People I was thinking when that. you were talking about, you know, the uh, disillusionment of the, uh, the 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 you know liberal middle class opinion, you know, about Zionism. You know, the hospital bombing, you know, broke the the mental you know hold that it had over them because. At first, they believed it, you know, that uh, it wasn't, you know, uh, it wasn't, you know, the Israel Air Force, you know, that had done it, you know, they believed, you know, that it was, you know, like, 
Islamic Jihad, you know, misfired missile or something like that. And then Israel kept on doing it. You know, so they kept on bombing other hospitals as well, with no excuse oh. whatsoever. You know, like they figured they could get away with it. You know, one time when you know, like why not? You know, like continue. You know, so then they realized, you know, they were duped. You know, and then they thought, you know, like wow, you know, the initial rationalization for the war in Gaza was the forty beheaded, you know, burnt babies. And maybe that's not true either. And so then they go, you know, look for the proof. You know, like finally, you know, be. Besides, you know, the word of some supposed eyewitness who heard some supposed eyewitness, and then there was no proof. So then you realize, you know, even the United Nations Security Council had resolutions that were formulated, you know, with reference to, you know, the to the atrocities perpetuated by the Hamas, you know, uh, terrorists. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes they would add the, the word terrorist. Okay, but it was the, the atrocities committed by, you know, as if it was assumed without any proof, and now all that has come crumbling down. Now there's a ceasefire, although Israel is uh, not letting food in to uh, the northern Gaza. They want to annex it right away. <coughs> yeah, so well, that's put a hick into the whole process well, of uh, you know, Hamas releasing uh, some more, you know, prisoners who they wanted well, to release in the first know, place because they didn't want to hold, the, you know, the civilians. They want to hold the, the soldiers and the generals. I hear from Ahmed, they have three generals. yes. And mm. they're going to extract a big price for those. And, uh, you know, and if the Israel doesn't concede, you know, like uh, the release of uh, the Palestinian prisoners in exchange for these, you know, soldiers, then, um, you know, this whole military is going to be disillusioned, you know, with what the state is doing and who they're uh, loyal maybe, to. Uh, if the state is not know, loyal I, to I the would... military, why should the military be loyal to the state? You know, like it graces a whole conundrum. Yeah. True. I did not know there were any generals being held. Yes, I heard uh, one, you know, the ma the major general, you know, of the whole Gaza defense line there. And uh, Ahmad told me that there was three actually, you know, like lesser generals as well. There were a lot of, a lot of generals floating around there. Yeah. So. Well, well that's, that's, that's an interesting turn, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That was the whole strategy, you know, to get these uh, military hostages that they could exchange uh, for the, at the time, you know, 5,000 Palestinian uh, prisoners. Well, now it's 7,000. 2,000 more, yeah. mainly from the West Bank, are now in prison. Probably some of them are my friends, too. So, you know, they're going to have to be released. But they don't want, you know, to exchange uh, prisoners. They want to continue with the war. They want to go right, you know, as far as they can, you know, complete, you know, eradication well, the, of the Palestinians the, by one way or another. The way the way I see it, my view could be wrong because I don't know of the ability of the tactical plans of Islamic Jihad or Hamas or the other Palestinian resistance forces. I I I, I'm, I, I don't know of their of their plans and their capacity. You know, I don't know. Yeah. But to me, Israel Israel wants to kill civilians and bomb civilian infrastructure. That is the war. If they run into resistance fighters, if you've noticed they usually stay inside their, their armored personnel vehicles or 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 they use their tanks. Um they, they they're not really trying to come out in, into an urban area. And because they have no no cover besides their tanks mm -hmm. to to hide, so I do think that, and I could be wrong about this. Well, a couple of days ago, someone asked me a question, and I I I, I reserved judgment until I got facts. And they asked me what I think was going to happen with 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 the with the ceasefire, and I said, well, I said to myself. Israel is Israel like is like the is like the United States. There's never a ceasefire treaty that they haven't broken. So I I, I predicted they would continue to do things during the ceasefire and uh, and they have continued to mobilize. Mm -hmm. So I do think that they want war, not to fight the resistance fighters necessarily, but to destroy infrastructure, mm -hmm. to destroy buildings, hospitals, schools. Mm -hmm. Ain't, I mean, I think when they run across tunnels, when they run across fighters, they they will engage them. 
But I do think that the offensive is about infrastructure and pushing mm. pushing people out yeah. of Israel proper into Egypt mm. or Jordan or some other country. Yeah. Now, the United States did the same thing to Native people mm. in the 1800s and 1900s. They we, we, the United States waged war against Native people, pushed them from the southeast, from Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia area, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, pushed them west to Oklahoma. Then and, and, and that was supposed to be Native territory. Then it became a state. So just like the United States did the same thing to Native people, it's what Israel is doing to the Palestinians right now. There is no difference mm-hmm. except, the United, except the United States. I mean, there is, it, really, it really is no difference, mm-hmm. except they, in Israel, they want to push them out of the country. Mm-hmm. The United States pushed them to a territory and then made that territory, territory state. Therefore, the Native people had, had, had no quote-unquote Native country. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I, I was reading, watching something a few days ago, and um, it just dawned on me that the the um, parallels are quite similar. Mm-hmm. So we we'll have to see. We we'll have to see what Israel does. I I just think that they are. They say they want to fight Hamas and in Hamas, which they really can't do, if because because if say they quote destroy Hamas, other liberation other resistance forces are, are going to emerge. Yeah, you can't you can't keep your neck on people, expect them to stop to not fight back. Yeah, it's just, it's just the way that goes. I mean, they may wait to make it to the neck is to your boots off their neck, and they go to the hospital and get fit, fit, then they'll come back and fight you. That yeah. that that's how that goes. So yeah, well, that's what happened in what Lebanon. Happened. You know, there was the five thousand PLO fighters in Lebanon that uh, were resisting rather minimally. But Israel went in there to wipe them out, you know, and invaded all of Lebanon all the way up to Beirut. And then that resulted in the massacre of the Palestinian refugees in Sabra Shatila, where I wrote my first book when I was working at the Palestine Embassy in Ottawa, 1982 to 85. That's what they did. You know, they came in there and they allowed, you know, the Palestinians to be massacred. And the phalanges, you know, local Palestinian Christian militia was used by Israel as their mercenaries to do so. 3,000 killed in three days. Yeah. And now what's mm-hmm. happening? Oh, I made a painting for the for my picket line at the Jewish Center tomorrow. Let me show you the painting that I'm going to hold now. Good. Ah, uh, here it is. This puts it rather succinctly. One Holocaust does not, I can't, I can't read it. Does not justify another. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yes, correct. That's very good. Let me, let me, it's not showing up right. It, it's, uh, I think it's because of your, your screen. Yeah. And your school thing. Yeah. You have to turn it off and then you make uh. it. Yeah. There you go. It's, it's better. It's not. Yeah. Well, because it's moving. This is good. One Holocaust of Dodgers does not just find another one. Another one. Yep. There it is. Yep. That's well, that's well, that's, that's nice print job, nice colors. Yeah, the real colors. And then mm-hmm. at the bottom, I put the uh, website for the Jewish Socialist Bund. Uh, so, uh, but you know, um, although you know, I've helped organize you know the Jewish opposition to Zionism, you know, in in three cities now: Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal. Um, you know, like uh, the uh, Jewish activists, you know, groups that uh, that have sprung up, you know, they can do their activism, you know, like, but they don't include me, you know, because I'm I'm. Uh, too far gone for them, you know, like, because they either come from, you know, CP, red diaper baby uh, background, or uh, anarchist, or Marxist of some sort, you know, and they don't, you know, accept, you know, that there would be a Bund, you know, like they're, you know, they they sort of, you know, treat the Bund, you know, like it was a historical, uh, historical fact, 
and uh, uh, that brought honor to the Jewish working class, you know, of Eastern Europe. But you know, it should not exist anymore. <laughs> Even well, though, it does, you know, like, so they try to ignore me. You know, like I've gotten no support from the uh, the bigger J Jewish opposition groups. You know, that are dominated by ex CPers and ex Trotskyists and uh, Marxists of what sort. I even got expelled from the Marxist mail uh, email list. Uh, you know, the uh, Ukraine was bad enough, you know, but now Gaza, oh, you know, they couldn't take that. So I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine was too much. Oh my God. Now Gaza, get out of here. Yeah. No, um, this, this phenomenon you're talking about, Abraham, does concern me. I'm alone because, there. Yeah, I'm alone on the picket line, you know, like for well, three times now. Nobody, no one should be alone on the picket line. First of all, that shouldn't happen, okay? Yeah. Se second thing, we're talking about building united fronts. We have to find what we unite around and then organize our forces against that. Hmm. Well, we do have it, a united front, you know, like in the broad, you know, like a, a Palestine Solidarity Movement, you know, that's achieved. But to do work inside the Jewish community, oh, oh, that's very problematic. You know, either they're too scared to do it or they're too sectarian to do it. You know, and one sort of feeds the other. So, you know, I'm I'm there, you know, like on my own. And the only protection I have is the cops <laughs> sitting in there. The well, no, vehicle, I, I, you know, I, like I, just, <laughs> that's so funny. No, I, I, I just want to be very critical about this because let me, and you know, let me t tell you why I'm, I have this kind of staunch position on this now. You know, here in the United States, you know, like you just mentioned, uh, the um, Russian military defense of the Russian population and against the anti the fascist movement in Ukraine didn't bode too well for leftists in the United States. Yeah, they saw it as an invasion as opposed to a geopolitical move that had some long-term implications. They, they, they didn't see it that way. Well, Russia's a capitalist country, they're quote, invading, therefore they're wrong. Okay. Yeah. His, history isn't necessarily always based on that, on that, those kind of lines. There's other things that are coming into play. Mm. So when you're it was so and when it comes to um Israel versus the Palestinians, which is what it's about. It's Israel versus the Palestinians. There was an oh Hamas did this, and now and now the word's coming out that all the lies that came out about what Hamas did on the seventh of October, the lies are now being exposed. The mistruths are being are being opened. Mm. But because they're so hostile to Hamas as a Muslim political military organization, mm. they could not unite with someone who's outside of that view. This is I mean, this is what it I'm saying what it comes down to. Mm. They would say, well, basically it's like this, Abraham. At least within the United States. And, uh, and I'm not advocating anything. But if someone is charged with using quote unquote force or quote unquote violence against someone in the pursuit of a political objective, you're simply ghosted. Oh no, we can't have that. Yet the government can use any type of military, any kind of armed self-defense they want. It was, oh, that's so wrong. So it just seems to me in your situation, those groups are doing the same thing. And because you're associated with the Bund, they 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 they, they want to distance themselves from you. You're associated with the Bund is not the issue. The issue is defending the Palestinian people and the Arab people in the Middle East, right? Yeah. To be free of, of, of military military aggression by the United States through yeah. Israel. Yeah. That's, that's what that's I don't understand about them. You know, like, you know, like intervening directly in the Jewish community should be, you know, like a key sort of element, you know, to undoing Zionism, you know, because you know, like <laughs> that's where the problem is. You know, if the Jewish people turn against Zionism, Zionism, you know, collapses. It collapses. It collapses overnight. It's over. Yeah. It's over. It's over. Literally, if 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 there's no support, if they have no base, 
they don't have a base to work within, it dies. Yeah. And the protesters, know. you know, they're just the young people without money, you know, so they don't count, you know, as far as uh, internal Jewish politics is concerned, you know, because they've got a hold. The Zionist parties, they have a hold, you know, infiltrated every single organization. It's really incredible. But we have to worry. We have to. We have to wonder, though. I mean, well, and I, I, I don't know the dynamics, <clears throat> the dynamics of the Jewish, the Jewish community. But I have to wonder now: Is it not time to turn that upside down? Because you have money, you control this movement. You control the entire your tendency within the Jewish community. Is is that what's dominant? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> Somebody's got to challenge that. Someone's got to say the Jewish workers, the yeah. Jewish butlers, the Jewish carpenters, the Jewish, the Jewish house maids, the Jewish plumbers, the Jewish school teachers, the Jewish, I mean, the people who are in the bottom of us, who's the poly on the bottom of society are actually the ones who need to speak up. Yeah. And say we because that this violence of Israel, disregard Hamas for a second, just disregard that nonsense. This violence does not reflect what we what we aim for our for Israel to be or for our people to be associated with. Yeah. Period. Once that is said, and that begins to resonate, that's what those youth those youth represent. The, the, the soul does statement not in our name. Mm-hmm. That they represent not not in our name, and I think that's wonderful. Yeah. And if we think about all this money, well, I think that needs to be frankly challenged. I think that needs to be challenged upright up for the United States. If it is true, if it's true that another nation can come to your Congress and buy you off, then that shit needs to be outlawed and be put in fucking jail. And those Congress people need to be unseated. Yeah. If, 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 because no, because in most parts of the world, you can't pull that off, man. No, you cannot. You cannot openly. You know, not openly. You have to do it. You have to do it covertly through grants, through nonprofits, through NGO. You know, through uh, you know, a civil assistance program. Not openly will come buy you off. That's that has to end, yeah. and that has to come from the Jewish community. Yeah, if it comes from outside, oh, you're 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 you know, that has to come from those youth and those militants and and the com- the good people who don't want their name associated with with, with this kind of bloodshed. Yeah. This is making yeah. Israel. Yeah. This, no, this is making the Star of David look real bad around the world. I'm serious. It is it making it's making the whole Star of David idea look bad. You're making enemies, re- really making enemies now. Every bomb you drop, every hospital you destroy, every child you arrest, every person you kill, you, you're looking bad. The whole the whole idea is looking is looking bad. Mm. It ain't looking good, man. That's making too many enemies. Mm. And I think that's what the people. I'm, I'm not. I didn't see the letters within the State Department. I didn't see it, but it had to have said that. We're in the United States are looking really bad too. Really bad, in the United States. All the all the bombs come from here. All the yeah, aid comes it amounts from here. to. Uh... You know, this is this all amounts to a class question because it's the Jewish national bourgeoisie that is a pro-Zionist that wants their own state, you know, to secure their own interests and their own wealth. And, you know, they're dominating every sort of, you know, aspect of the Jewish community. The Canadian Jewish Congress was shut down for the lack of funding by the uh, Canada, uh, the Council, uh, no, the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. And, and then and then they took over the Command Jewish Appeal, you know, which is like the taxing agency of the internal Jewish community for donations. And they just use, you know, 35% of that, you know, they sent to Israel right away, you know, to for social services there because they're lacking the money, you know, because it's going into the military. And then the rest, you know, they just use, you know, like to set up, you know, like employees who are Zionists, you know, and with a nice salary in various organizations to ostensibly run the organizations. But actually what they're doing is just acting as a, a filter for Zionist propaganda. And so, you know, like all that has got to be challenged. You know, the United States, there's still the um, American Jewish Congress. And, and JBC, right. and if not now, they should all go into the Canadian American Jewish Congress and, you know, vote themselves into power, you know, and challenge, you know, the national bourgeoisie, Zionist control of the to. institutions and property, yeah. you know, immense properties as well, and schools and all that sort of thing, you know. And here in Canada, you know, like we have to get a plenary session of the Canadian Jewish Congress again, you know, to overrule the dictatorship that has been imposed upon us. Or, or at least, at least, if we can't overrule it, at least create the the space for debate. Because mm-hmm. right now, right now, I'm telling you, right now, no debate is allowed. 
<laughs> at least with it, with unless unless you demonstrate blockade, take over something, disrupt. That's the only time your voices are going to be heard. Yeah. And within the within the halls of power, within yeah. these organizations you're talking about, yeah. opposition voices are not allowed. Yeah, yeah. But I, I've managed to excavate a, a sort of a passageway into legal, you know, dissent internally in the Jewish community now with my picket line tomorrow. So even if I'm just one, you know, I, it doesn't matter. You know, I, it just has the same effect. But I've invited sure. Natura Karta in to come and uh, and uh, demonstrate together with me. But Natura Karta is into doing, you know, solidarity. So that once they come out, you know, for one uh, Palestinian demonstration, you know, they 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 don't uh, do, you know, like another demonstration the same weekend. You, so I don't expect them to be there. But they should. Okay. They should come and speak directly to the Jewish community because they are an authentic voice of Judaism and they bring back, you know, the true heritage. I should make, you know, you know, leaflets, you know, with the with the uh, the sayings of Samuel, the prophet, because he was anti-state. He was anti-king, even though he chose Saul to be the king, you know, and they all harken back, you know, to the kingdoms of Israel as if this is a justification for what they're doing and for an exclusivity over the territory. But, you know, in Judaism, there is no such exclusivity and there is no kingdom either. You know, that was, you know, something that uh, was, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, established in opposition to the uh, to the Jude uh, Judaism, in effect, because Samuel said, you know, there should be no king. And uh, that's Whoa. all written down there, you know, so I'm going to print it up, you know, in both um, English, French, and Hebrew, <laughs> and hand it out to the people so that they can get themselves educated, you know, and know what it is all about. Because this, you know, nonsense, you know, it comes from Protestantism. It's not Judaism. Protestantism says that the place for the Jews is to go back to Palestine to um, prepare the uh, the stage, you know, for the return, return of the Messiah, which they call Jesus Christ. So, you know, that's what the role of the Jewish people is, you know, like Jewish people elsewhere, you know, are not, you know, like, they're not, you know, uh, accepted. And, and in fact, uh, you know, those, you know, they consider Zionists to be converts to Christianity, to Protestant Christianity. So that's why they get along so well. So those who refuse to go to Israel are those who refuse to be converted to Protestantism, and therefore they will be eliminated. That's the party, the part that's eliminated by the, uh, by the days of uh, awe. Yeah, I think that's what they call it. And, uh, and uh, this is what they have planned, you know, for uh, anti-Zionist Jewish people. It's very uh, sort of, a, it's a question, it's an existential question is here for the American Jewish community. Do they want to stay in the United States or, you know, are they waiting, you know, to be pushed, you know, into uh, Israel by their own allies, <laughs> supposedly? This is the question that Zionists have to consider. And the answer is, you know, that they cannot be Zionists and be Jewish. You know, one is not compatible with the other. And they're going to learn this. Well, I'm 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 glad we're talking about this because I've been very I've been very concerned with the uh, censorship, with the uh, lack of the lack of debate, uh, the banning of or the, the attempt to bag the Palestinian flag in some countries, um, just the entire way that this is this is the making anti pro being pro Palestinian pro being for the resistance means you're anti Semitic, no. Okay. No. The, no, no, the, no. We, we, and, you know, that has to be fought for outside and inside the Jewish community. Mm. Because, Even the attacks that, that have taken place against the Jewish community here in Montreal, there was two, a, school, a school that was shot at twice and mm. uh, another synagogue that had a Molotov cocktail to one of them. Okay, but if they took down the Israel flag in front of the place, I don't think that they would get attacked, you know, <laughs> like they're putting up, you know, the Israel flag, you know, so it's a question of, you know, of Zionism is not a question of anti-Semitism. Yeah, you know, the, we got to yeah, get rid of the flag. Yeah, the flag. The flag has become a real polarizing symbol of a violent oppression of an unarmed people. Yeah, because like it or not, we may, we might not like it. The Palestinian resistance is not able to does not desire to nor is it able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Israel. Israel is not fighting a war against another country with the army. A real army, not, you know, I'm just saying 
the Palestinian resistance is doing the best it can with what it has. Yeah. Israel is not Israel is not seeking to fight a war. They're seeking to kill civilians mm -hmm. and destroy infrastructure. Now it needs to be something we talk about. Mm -hmm. Kill civilians and to build a movement internationally mm -hmm. that will justify and support that. Mm -hmm. Their goal is to have a movement internationally in Europe, in the United States, in South America, in Asia, in the, in the Caribbean, in Oceania, that supports them. And we got to keep that in mind also. Where you have people, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use some terms that aren't too kind. We have people that aren't too educated about the world, who only know their village or their community. They don't really get a chance to read much about what's really going on outside society. They'll be more, more, more inclined to support Israel. Why? It's based on God. It's based on religion. Okay? So we have to really know that Israel has a, and the United States has a, pro, a plan to spread that it is right around the world. Anybody who opposes it anywhere in the world is an anti-Semite mm -hmm. or is, is supporting terrorism. We have to keep that when we build up. That's why our protests are so important. I still say the protest is what has kept some of this Israel stuff in check. And I'm not saying it's in check at all, but some of the more visual abuses, Israel's had to cut back a little bit. Mm -hmm. They can't be they can't be seen bombing nothing. No, they can't bomb on hospitals. Mm -hmm. they, I, mean, I mean, they can't they, they, they can't have it filmed. Mm -hmm. Okay? They no, they can't. So we have to remember that they have an international program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very encouraging. Thank you, Steve. And uh, tomorrow I'll be on the picket line there, and then I'll I'll make a, a body cam video of that as well. I'll put on my YouTube channel. Do that. Very good. Okay. So here we go. Now, I think that we are having an effect. That the movement is an in yeah. um, an international movement so strong that it's been fed by ideas, our ideas, which originated yeah. with us. Yes. And, uh, this is now having an effect. And so we continue. Thank yes. You.